to see what God, the potential God has. He has right here in his building, you living stones, as Peter calls you. You are a living stone, and you are made to make the house of God. God sees potential in you. Satan's going to tell you you're just a burned out mess. You're disorganized and you're laying in rubble. But God sees what you can be. As one on top of another, we make up the house of God. We make up the building that First Peter speaks of. You are a living stone built upon the foundation of the apostles and built into a holy building of God. That's his church. And you're a part of that church as a living stone before God. Sometimes he attacks us on proficiency. Proficiency. How are we going to get it done? Do we have the ability to get it done? And remember, this could be taken pretty seriously because remember last week we read who was building the wall? Remember some of those guys? How much do perfum perfumers know about building walls? <laughs> How about goldsmiths? I mean, that's not, wall building is not something you learn in Goldsmith 101. <laughs> Uh, the ladies, the ladies help build the walls along the way too. You know, he attacked the proficiency. He said, even if a fox, how big is a fox? Little, little guy. Even if a fox should get on their wall, the wall would fall down. The wall would fall down. They can't build anything that lasts. They can't build anything that's going to stand up over time. Well, archaeologists have actually exposed some of that wall down, and it is up to nine foot wide. And when they finish the wall, you could drive a cart on top of the wall. <laughs> it was well built. It was well built. But Satan attacks us at the level of efficiency. We may think that we can't do what God wants us to do. We just don't have the gifts. We don't have the skills. But I'm telling you, God's not ever going to call us to do more than he's going to equip us for. He's going to call the right people. He's going to uh, give us opportunity to learn the right things. He's going to allow us to be equipped to the service of the Lord, and we'll be able to accomplish exactly what God wants us to do. We don't have to worry about his proficiency. He is able to make us proficient to accomplish his will. Amen? And even if a fox should jump on our church, it's going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be all right because God's in charge of his building. So they attacked them verbally. How did Nehemiah respond to that? Look there with me in the next verse, in verse 4. Nehemiah says, Hear, O our God, how we are despised. Return their reproach on their own heads and give them up for plunder in a land of captivity. Do not forgive their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out before thee, for they have demoralized the builders. He says, the first thing he does when he faces hostility is pray to God. That's the first thing we should do when we face hostility, when we handle conflict, is pray to God. God's the one who is able to give us what we need to handle the conflict that comes into our life. Whether it be conflict from our personal walk and stand for the Lord on the job or, or at school or, or at work, I guess that's the same as on the job, <laughs> whether it be personal conflict we face or whether it be conflict as a church. The first thing we need to do is fall on our knees before God and pray and seek his advice and seek his help. And here he, he prays something pretty strong, doesn't he? He prays that God would take, really what he's praying for is for God's justice to be done, for God's wrath to fall on them as it is appropriate, trusting that God knows how to handle the situation. And really, that's not a bad prayer, is it? We pray for God's will to be done when we face conflict. And the God's will be done in the lives of those who are causing conflict so that God can receive the glory for what he's doing. They face difficulty, so Nehemiah prayed. And then what else did he do? Look down in that next verse, verse 6. So we built the wall, and the whole wall was joined together to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Here's what we need to do when we face hostility. Pray to God. Keep on doing what God told us to do. Pray to God. Keep on working. 
right? Pray to God, keep on sharing. Pray to God, keep on witnessing. Pray to God, keep on doing what God tells us to do until he tells us to do something different. If you ever wonder, why, what does God want me to do next? I would, my advice to you is keep doing what God told you to do last until he tells you to do something different. Uh, that's what you do next, is what you did last, if God <laughs> hasn't given you different direction. So continue to work, continue to do something. I love this phrase at the end of that verse. It says, the people had a mind to work. People had a mind to work. You all know by heart by now my favorite verse, right? Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. I'm going to give it to you again just so you... Now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Unto him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now, that phrase, according to the power that works in us, God has a will for his people to do, but he depends on us to do it. Nehemiah prayed to God, and then he went back to work, doing what God had called him to do. And that's what we've got to do when we face difficulty or, or conflict or, or struggles. Pray to God for strength and continue to work on what he's told us to do. So their verbal attack didn't work out very good. The people continued to build, and they got half the wall done. So there was a physical attack planned after that. Look there in that next verse. It says now, in verse 7, it came about when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard, you remember, they're surrounding them, heard that the repair of the walls of Jerusalem went on, and that the breaches began to be closed. They be, were very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause a disturbance in it. They began to plan their physical attack. They conspired together. I'm amazed, aren't you, at how many special groups that represent different causes will get together when it comes to standing against Christianity. Have you noticed that? I mean, they may have nothing in common outside of the fact that they hate Christians. But they'll get together and conspire together against Christians. Doesn't matter who they are. Each of these groups represented their own little parts of the world, and they had their own selfish interests. But when it came to fighting against the people of God, they all got together to plan their attack. Folks, don't be surprised if it seems like the whole world is against us sometimes as Christians. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if, if it's only politically correct to to say bad things about Christians and no other group and no other religions can you say bad things about because there could be riots or there could be terrible things happen around the world if you say anything bad about anybody else. But you can say whatever you want to against Christians, right? It's been happening for a long time. <laughs> All kinds of groups meet together to conspire against the Lord. All kinds of groups meet together to conspire against God. God's people. Finally, they begin to, to plan to fight against Jerusalem. And one of the things I, I want you to know of is that is not a good idea. <laughs> God says that Jerusalem was special. God says for us as Christians to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, really, America is the only nation that really supports Israel uh, strongly. Uh, someday that may not be true, and someday it won't be true. Obviously, in, in time matters, it says Israel stands alone, and all the nations conspire against Israel. We read this same thing happening later on in end times matter. But it's not a good idea to conspire against God's people because you're conspiring against God when you do that. You're conspiring against God. The third thing I want you to see is that Nehemiah had an answer for this problem. What was his first part of his answer? Can you begin to see a pattern here? <laughs> the first part of his answer was found there in verse 9. Verse 9, it says, and we prayed to our God. 
And then it says, and because of them, we set up a guard against them day and night. They prayed to God. The first part thing they did was get back on their knees before God. What do we do when we want to handle conflict? We get back on our knees before God. Because God's going to be the one that gives us the strength. He's going to give us the answers. He's going to give us the heart that we need to have to handle conflict. And then the second thing, what, what, what else did they do? They continued the work. They continued to do what they were supposed to do. But they continued in a little bit different way because Nehemiah armed the workers. Because he said, we're going to... Uh, station soldiers at certain points along the wall and we're going to have trumpeters uh, at certain points around the wall and everybody who is working on the wall is going to either have a sword strapped on its side so they can use both hands or is going to have a, a weapon in one hand while they work with the other hand. They're going to be equipped. Church, we need to hear this. If we're going to fight the battle that God has for us to fight, if we're going to represent God in this world, if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, we have to put on the spiritual armor. Ephesians chapter 6. We have to put on the spiritual armor. Otherwise, we're going to get hurt. Right? We need to do our part. We trust in God, but our part is to put on the armor of God. We trust that He's going to win the battle, but we're going to get hurt unless we put on the armor that he's advised us to put on in Ephesians chapter 6. we got to go into the battle, as it mentioned in that video. The Bible in one hand and our weapon in, two, in the other. we got to go into the battle fully equipped to win the battle with God's help. Amen? Amen. Well, there's one other people I want to see you. We talked about the